What's up everyone, TerraQuake here, and welcome back to the Pokemon Platinum walkthrough. In the last part, we checked out a ton of optional areas now that we have Surf, and we're doing much of the same in today's episode, but we're kind of going to be sticking around one area this time around. And also, it is episode 30, so yeah, the big 3-0. But today we're checking out the Fuego Ironworks and the Floroma Meadows at the end. And in order to get there, you just have to surf up from Route 205. Now, this is definitely a forgotten about area in the uh, in the Sinnoh games, I feel like. I know like a lot of people just forget this thing even exists, but it's got some trainers to battle, some items to pick up, and uh, there's some nice rewards in there. At the end, you can also trade star pieces for different colored shards, which can help you with, you know, learning moves from all the different move tutors. For now, I'm on the outside by the grass picking up some berries, and in this grass you can get Magnemite and Magmar, so a couple of uh, new options there. And I know there's a hidden Ultra Ball lying around here somewhere northwest of the Honey Tree. Oh my, I got that pretty quickly, sweet. And then there's also a hidden Big Mushroom. I think it's going to be down this gap. Yep, it just looked too suspicious. So now it's time to head on inside, and unfortunately, this place got some inspiration from Team Rocket or something, and they have these spinny tiles. Yay, our favorite. Yeah, it uh, kind of sucks, but nah, this place isn't too much of a puzzle. It's relatively straightforward. You might have to go out of your way if you want to get an item or something. Anyways, there was a shard right there, and I think we're going to want to go up this way and take on the first worker. I believe there's four of these dudes in here. They're gonna have like, you know, Magnemites, maybe some fire types because it is the Fuego Ironworks after all. So let's see, you've got, okay, I'm totally wrong, Machop, perfect. Well, luckily I do have my regular team back. Of course, in the last episode, we, you know, added some like uh, HM Pokemon just to get around easier, but we got the full team back. We should be good to go. Benny's got Psybeam, hopefully just going to destroy this Machop, and uh, Hippopotas is still lagging behind a bit. I just really wish it could learn Dig. I don't see the reason and why it can't, but apparently in Gen 4 it can't get Dig, which is pretty disappointing. If it had Dig, it'd be able to really fend for itself, but all it can do right now is hope for the best with, you know, the very inaccurate Sand Tomb, and just hit hard with Crunch, which isn't Stab, so... It doesn't hit too hard, but uh, yeah, Sandstorm rages on, and you've got a Machoke, so I'm just going to stay in. We're getting flashbacks to Maylene's gym, going to destroy this thing. It'll probably take two hits, but that is a-okay, unless we get a crit. Of course not, never get a crit when I need to. Vital throw, we resist, because we're a beautiful bug type. Anyways, I'm still doing a uh, recording session here on December 26th. I think I talked about that in one of the past two episodes, but it's probably going to be the last one of the night. I wanted to do more, but then I realized that I still need to upload today's episode, and, you know, I got to try my best to at least get that up before midnight, or then technically I would ruin the daily streak. But if I got it up at, like, 12.15 a.m., then I wouldn't, I wouldn't really worry about it too much. But yeah, I think this will be the last one I'm recording tonight, but it'll get me ahead until like Wednesday or Thursday technically, which isn't too bad. All right, so moving on, let's take this spinny tile, and I think this is going to be a calcium right here. There we go. And then there's a hidden protein, I think right here maybe? Yeah, there it is. All right, so then moving on, we're going to have to go, oh gosh, we're going to have to go all the way back around to get to the next little part. And you're actually gonna find like all the different colored shards in here because I don't know, do they make shards? Is that what this place is about? I'm not sure, but there's the main boss guy. He's kind of the one that, you know, runs this place, I guess. And it is time for worker number two. We gotta keep these guys in check, you know, make sure they're doing their job, man. They could be slacking and we could be getting no more shards, which means no more move tutors, oh no. And here's Magnemite. Okay, these are things that, like, you know, Moto Moto can deal with, sort of. I mean, that's the sad thing, dude. Sand Tomb still doesn't one-shot these things. Watch this. Watch this. First of all, we gotta hope we land it. And then Sand Tomb, even though it's quad effective, it still won't one-shot. I guarantee it. We're one level below. 
I mean, dude, it barely does over half. This is a quad effective move. But what is it, like 30 base power? It's basically the same power as tackle, so that's why. Imagine tackle being quad effective on something. I know it's a normal type move, but just imagine. Just use your beautiful imagination. All right, luckily, Hippopotas should be able to handle all these guys by himself. They can really just go for Magnet Bomb. Luckily, we are immune to their Thunder Wave, which is good. Unfortunately, they don't get hit by the Sandstorm, which kind of sucks. But, hey, it's a win-win, kind of lose-lose scenario, win-lose scenario, whatever. We do get outsped, too, which is just sad. Hippos can actually swim, like, pretty fast. I've seen those videos online where, like, people are on a boat and then Hippos will just be, like, chasing them in the water. Those things can move. But, unfortunately, we're on land. And even if we were to be surfing, that wouldn't factor in with the Pokemon game. So, Hippopotas would still be pretty slow. But, dude, that would be, like, really scary. Getting chased by a Hippo in the water. Because, yeah, apparently they can swim, like, really fast. And they can kill people, which is kind of scary, too. Not even going to lie. So, I don't know. Those are just facts that I've heard. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's true. All right, level 32. It's been like forever since you leveled up. So, good job, Moto Moto. And you've got one more Magnemite for us to deal with. Worker Holden. Oh, gosh. That reminds me of a book I read in like sophomore year of high school. What was it? Catcher in the Rye, I think? Or is that a different one? I don't know. All the books I've read in school just like mixed together. But it was not my favorite because the character in there, he was just kind of annoying. Can't even lie. Not sure if uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. If you do, maybe drop your opinion on the book down below. But for me, I don't know. That character, he was just kind of like a whiner, you know, the entire time. He just never looked on the bright side. And I was like, dude, come on. But again, that was like two years ago. So pff, I don't have too much memory. Maybe there's some good things that I forgot about. And don't miss Santoon, please. Thank you. And down goes worker number two of four, I think. I should probably double check that. Is there two or f or is there four or five? Oh, no, there's only three. Okay, sweet. I'm actually down with that. I thought there would be at least four, but whatever. All right, so now if we come down here, we can get a red shard. And I think to move on, you're kind of just going to start in the bottom left and work your way kind of towards the top right and then back down. And uh, that's how you're going to eventually get to the middle. So I think right there is going to be a blue shard if we eventually stop spinning. Well, first, that is the blue shard. So then I think it is the green shard that is up here. We're getting the whole freaking rainbow, dude. Oh my gosh, crazy. But yeah, items are just lying all over the place. And it looks like there's a hidden star piece inside of a barrel coming up. So I'm going to try to look for that. I bet you it's, yeah, it looks like it's that one. Come on, that one's just way too suspicious. It's got to be. Okay, yeah, I was about to say. And then to the, oh gosh, I went back on the thing. But yeah, to the top right is a firestone, which is kind of neat. And now we get to like the final section. And you have three different ways you can go. Neither of them are going to like completely screw you over, but only one is the right direction. However, if you want to grab that item, I think, well, Bulbapedia doesn't tell me. So we're just going to take the top one and hope for the best. All right, well, that led us here. However, we can just backtrack and grab the item. And yeah, we can take on the worker. It is a rock incense, but I'm pretty sure you need to go up there to get to the end, right? I think. No, this might be the right direction. I don't know. It feels like the right direction considering we're battling a trainer. And luckily, this guy only has one Mon. And we are about to grab the TM for Flamethrower, which is super awesome. I think I'm going to teach that to Monferno, but I got to make sure he doesn't learn it on his own. I can't remember if Infernape does or not because I don't want to, you know, waste the TM. But yeah, just again, some really good items here. If you need a Firestone for like, well, what Pokemon evolved with a Firestone in this game? At least, you know, ones that we've seen so far. I guess Eevee into Flareon. But there's just not too many Fire-type options in general out in the wild. So, yeah, kind of, a, kind of a bummer. Also, going back to, you know, finding Magmar outside of this place. Remember, you can get Magmortar in this game as long as you have the Magmarizer. And we just got the Electorizer in the last episode. I can't remember where you get the Magmarizer, though. I don't think it's in this place. This would be like a perfect place to get it though, but for some reason they decided not to give it to us. 
And we get a critical surf. Nice job, Bucky. Let's go. And should I switch a public test out from the front? I feel like I should. Is he... Yeah, you're the same level as Eevee. Whatever. Okay, so I think we can go up here. And yeah, this takes us right to the middle. So before I talk to him, there's the team for Flamethrower right next to the big old furnace machine or whatever that thing is. And then he will give us a star piece. And as I said before, you can trade star pieces with him for different colored shards, either red, blue, yellow, or green ones. And that will just help you out with uh, move tutors and stuff like that. Other than that, though, that is it for the Fuego Ironworks. And there's one more spot I want to check out in this video, and that is, of course, the Floroma Meadow. Now, this is, uh, you know, just north of the little Floroma Meadow spot that we went to way earlier on when we had to, you know, save the honey dude from those Team Galactic grunts. But if we come in here, it's just a ginormous field that has a ton of items in it. Most of them are hidden. I'm at least gonna pick up all the ones that aren't hidden, like that uh, Miracle Seed right there. And then if we kind of go southeast of that, there is an Ultra Ball. And then, you know, it gets kind of confusing with all the hidden items. However, real quick, this is a Leaf Stone. And yeah, now there's just a ton of hidden items, but I will say a lot of them are good. There's like a couple of max revives you can get in here. So I'm just going to try and find out if I can, I'm just going to like see if I can get these or not. Yeah, there's a hidden hyper potion. Maybe they're not all so bad to get. I can't remember if they're all in like the little clear patches or if some of them are in the flowers. Let's see. Um, one's like right in the corner or at least somewhere around here. Oh, come on. It's a max revive, dude. Or no, I think it's just a revive. It's somewhere... If I could use the dowsing machine, that would be nice. But I just don't want to click the uh, poke etch right now. Because that would just get annoying. Um, let's see. One tile to the west of the yellow flowers in the center. Oh my gosh. See, that? that's just like so confusing in my opinion. Um, Alright, well, here's the yellow flowers. I really want to find the max revives. I'm not going to spend the entire, like you know, rest of the episode doing it, even though this is basically the end of the episode. Maybe I'll do this off camera. And yeah, there's a hidden Max Revive. I mean, you get the point. You can find Max Revives, Honeys, a PP Up, Rare Candy, and Full Heal. Actually, hold on. That Rare Candy is not hidden. It is right over here. So I'm probably just going to try and get like the rest of the Max Revives. And that is really about it. Actually, no, there, never mind. There's only one Revive. Or sorry, one Max Revive. There's six Honeys, though. So that's what's like taking up all the room. Anyways, that is going to do it for today's episode. Next time, I think I just realized there's actually two more areas we can check out. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and show it to you on my map. So I think I will split them up into two more videos. I know I'm spending a while doing these detour areas, but it is a walkthrough after all. And I need to do it just for my own sake of the team. But yeah, Route 213, just below the beach, so there's actually a few trainers you can battle in the water. And then there is Route 221 and 220 and 219 south of Sanjum Town. So, I don't know. Tomorrow we'll probably do Route 213 and maybe like Route 219. And then after that, 220 and 221 in the video after. But yeah, we'll figure it out. For now though, I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great rest of your day. And until next time, deuces!